Okay, hello everyone. Hello, hello. So, um, I want to talk about a remote viewing that I did last night. I did a remote viewing last night and then I did the card throws. It was very intense and It's the first time I felt like I connected with the energy of Donald Trump probably in a couple of months. I think maybe energetically I may have, you know, breached some boundaries or disrespected his energy in a way I, I, because I, I have found it difficult to remote view uh, Mr. Trump the last couple of months. But last night I did connect to his higher self or his core issues without the defense. That's kind of what I was meditating on, trying to really, really see that. And when I started to talk to that part of, of him in the meditative state, imagining him speaking to me, he, he said, and I apologize for the noise, uh, he said, and this was him in the presence of his his highest his highest uh, spirit guides. So it was as if imagine Donald Trump's true core self the, that is wounded, the part of him, the aspect of him that is wounded, in the care of the angels or in the care of the higher higher beings with a higher purpose. This is this is the meditation last night and so what I heard was this from Mr. Trump he said on a deep deep level he understands that that addiction takes many forms that the men in his family uh, all suffer from uh, addiction and he was encouraged to engage in activities that were uh, would could be construed as addictive at a very early age. It was kind of how he bonded with with his father, with with, with Fred, his brother, and that meant womanizing. Uh, you know, I think he has drank when he was younger, and then he stopped after Fred's death. I that that he said, oh, I never drank. I'm a little skeptical because when I go into the meditation, it looks like he bonded Fred Trump Sr. with his boys by carousing and flirting and uh, doing uh, naughty things. And the energy of the higher person trying to heal himself, for lack of a better word, says that at a very early age, he became addicted to these things. He was... Uh, exposed to these things and he became addicted to these things uh, sex um, now pharmaceutical drugs we're pretty sure about that even uh, regular MDs are now talking about the symptoms of that um, so we're looking at someone uh, sex addiction uh, drug addiction and what comes with that is also uh, an addiction to partying, an addiction to being in a, in a, in, on a constant high. And another aspect of being on a constant high is spending money. Um, Suzanne Summers suffered from this addiction. It's a recognized it's recognized in the DSM five as, as a form of addiction when you you know what we call shopaholics. Somebody who literally, they, the dopamine hits, it changes their chemistry, and so they can't stop spending money, throwing money around, particularly if they're being rewarded uh, in some way uh, with a woman's affection or better service at a hotel or people treating you as if you're uh, a god because you're their employer. And so those things became ingrained in him very early on, and they 
they make up part of of the psychosis of his 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 persona. It's not all of his psychosis. Sadomasochism kind of emerges when he realizes uh, that he will never be enough and that he's a loser. And so instead of taking it out on himself that he's a loser, he looks for people to scapegoat and then places that shame and that self-loathing on his victims and it makes him feel better. That's the origins of the sadomasochistic aspect, but in terms of the energy of his addiction, which we're now dealing with, it's, uh, it's expressing itself in the spending of money that led to this recent expose about, about the fact that 1% of the deficit came from him those years. Uh, of all the Americans. So he lost something like a hundred million dollars a year or something like that. Um, so that's that's an addict. You know, that's what he's he wants people to, to know that he's he that it, he, he's an addict, like a gambler, like he can't he can't stop. And so so if you understand that, then you understand that you, if you have an addiction and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, you may start to borrow money from questionable sources. So there are so many things that we as a nation can learn from this shadow that we now face, which is the wounded uh, person the frozen person, uh, the addicted person, uh, the need for fame, and, you know, why do we want these things? Why do, why do, why do we need this self-adoration? And I think that it is the time in the nation's history when together we have to have that conversation about why this shadow uh, comes to us at this time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shuffle the cards, and we're going to see how the week ends. Let's take a look. Just want to tune in on Donald Trump. Ask permission from Spirit to access his Ishkaic records for his highest good and for the highest good of the nation. What do we need to do? The base of the matter, we will come together as one nation. We will come together as one nation. We will come through this. What pushes through Four of Swords, soul searching, to be as Samadhi, to be in a state of such deep meditation that one is as death. We must become still like the death. And in this way, we, we attain unity, we come together. I've been feeling in my remote viewings that the Senate is shifting despite the public uh, outcry by the GOP that Donald Trump's been misrepresented. But when I go into the remote viewing, I see something different. I see that the GOP is shifting and that the Senate is moving towards impeachment as well. People keep saying that's not going to happen. That is going to happen. I think the president is going closer and closer and closer to resignation. And I think part of why Barr was brought in was to at least give the president enough time to, to figure out a deal with the prosecution about a resignation and immunity for him and his children. That feels to me right. Publicly, it doesn't look that way, but privately, I feel like these negotiations have actually gone for a very long time. Where we are at right now, the judgment comes. We now, as a nation, are at a point where we have to make a decision about who we are and what we stand for and what crosses us, a battle that is being walked away from. 
somebody in this battle will give up. And what is above us as a nation, something is being cut off or removed. And it sits in what? A feeling or need to come out of an entrapment or we have placed ourselves in a position by choice that we now wish to be removed from. What we sit in our past, a past of unity or going across the aisle, the, the yin and the yang coming together or Democrats and the GOP coming together, negotiations, deals, partnership. And we've gone into conflict, disagreements, arguments, divided. But we also could be constructing something that could be quite solid. Where we are at right now, we are in a stage of rapid movement. Things are happening very, very quickly now. We are in seventh house chariot moving quickly. What is around us? Just keeps talking about how the nation is strong, the nation is strong, the nation is strong. Hopes and fears that we will be victorious. The final outcome. We must face the ethos, the constitution, the thing that binds us, the Godhead, the thing that binds us as Americans. And what stands is the constitution. And the clarification. We harvest. There's Muller hopes and fears, a deal, the heartbreak. The deal leads to heartbreak. The deal involves Mueller and the stability of the nation. So, um, that is why on a very, very, very private level, I think, that as the investigation began to become more intense, private, casual exchanges took place uh, about what resignation would look like. And I believe those negotiations are ongoing. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your support of this channel. Uh, I love uh, doing this channel. And if you need to make a phone reading, absolutely reach out to me. My information's below. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time.